Hey guys, welcome back to the Jules Bianchi Tribute Career Mode. For those of you who don't know, I sadly lost the footage for the Austrian Grand Prix, hence why you haven't seen an Austrian Grand Prix on my YouTube channel. So apologies for that if any of you didn't see that. So as you can see, the points difference has been altered. I'll leave a link in the description as to what the result was in Austria. But anyways, we're now going... To, if you guys like would like to see an Austrian Grand Prix, it will have to be done at the end of the season, and then I'll... Let, I'll ask you guys if you want me to expunge the results that happened or do you want me to keep those results and just have this as a twentieth have it as a twentieth race. But anyways, we're now off to my actual home Grand Prix, well not Jules Bianchi's home Grand Prix, but our home Grand Prix which is Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. Hello and welcome to the British Grand Prix here at Silverstone. The grandstands are packed, the cars have made their way to the grid, and we're minutes away from lights out. Here are the starting positions for today's race. Looks like we've nailed that 19th place as we have qualified there once again in front of the Caterhams and our teammate. This is what the top 10 looks like. Wow, looks like Fernando Alonso is getting himself in there with the Rebels and Williams this time. With the Mercedes occupying the front row, Nico Rosberg once getting, again getting the better of Lewis Hamilton. Alright, we're on the grid here. We're going to make a bit of a change in strategy. We're going to decide to start on the prime tyre and come in for our pit stop to use the option tyre. See if we can try and jump a couple of cars when it comes to the, using the overcut. And possibly, due to our better pace round here. I'm pretty good round this circuit anyways. Your objective today is to get into the top five. That might be optimistic but we're going to try our best and we are away at Silverstone. Got a pretty decent start I'd say. I think I've got the Caterham alongside me though so I've got to be careful on my inside. We've very nearly hit both salvers into the first corner. We avoided any contact. We're up into P17. Coming down into the deep, heavy braking right hander here we're up into 14th place, no doubt, to, yeah, we're still in 14th place, I thought we'd lost a position there to the Toro Rosso of Kvyat, who's lost a bucket load of time somewhere, I don't know if he was held up by his teammate or not, but he's dropped back behind us, we're now up into 13th place, we come on to the Wellington Strait, from the end of sector number one, coming into Brooklyn, I think this corner is called, I should know the corners of this circuit, considering it is my home track, heading into Luffield now, the right, very famous right hand, as we come on to the old start pit straight coming up behind the second Toroso of jean eric Byrne coming onto the main this is one of the main straights of this circle coming into Cops corner very high speed corner we run a little bit wide coming out of the exit but we do get away with it and don't get any penalty with regards to track limits coming into the maggots and beckett's complex which i seem to have quite a bit of good pace compared with the other cars in front of me even with me starting on the prime tire that is very good to see as we now come on to the hangar straight we're right behind the Toros we're in the slipstream of Vern we could go down the inside into Stowe here we're going to go for the move down the inside no contact made whatsoever he leaves us plenty of space and we're up the inside into 12 as we come up to towards the end of the first lap going for a dive bomb move on the McLaren of Jensen Button have we managed to make the move stick we possibly have we're on the outside but Unfortunately, Button closes the door on us as we come on to start lap number two. So I'm thinking of possibly making a move prior to the DRS zone, but Vern is pretty close to us behind, so we've got to watch out behind as well as in front. We get very good drive off the first corner, possibly going side by side with the McLaren, but unfortunately Button holds us off. We're down the inside into this very slow right hand up into the DRS detection zone, and we are up into 11th place. We're now going to cut to Cops Corner, where we're now right behind the Force India of Nico Hulkenberg. Possibly going side by side with him into the Maggots and Beggets complex, but there's not enough room for us, and we're going to have to hold back for now into this string of left and right hand corners. Very famous set of corners throughout the history of Formula One. As we come out of the onto the hangar straight, Hulkenberg then has a 
move at Magnussen in front of us, going around the outside of the McLaren in, into Stoke on. We're now going to go down the inside of the McLaren, so Magnussen is going to lose two places in the space of a corner. That is that's brilliant stuff from us. We're up into tenth place, avoiding any contact with the McLaren. Going down the inside of Hulkenberg now into the final chicane, heading into the final corner. We're up into ninth place. We've now cut on to lap number three. A very similar spot where we overtook Magnussen. We're now right behind the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. Now with the DRS enabled, we are in the slipstream of the Ferrari in front of us. Could we go down the inside once again? Yes, we do. We very nearly touched, though. It's really, really close, but we managed to keep it clean. We're up into eighth place. Now off in pursuit of the Red Bulls and the Williams cars in front of us. But as we cut onto lap num at the end of lap number four to start lap number five, this is when the race actually starts turning against me. You'll notice here, as we come into the first car, we get very good drive up once again. We're closing the gap on Sebastian Vettel, who is the next car in front of us. Coming to the slow right-hander, I'm going to try and be, be very ambitious, try and go down the inside of the Red Bull prior to the DRS zone. But I, because of the way I've turned too tightly, very similar to what happened in Canada, where Alonso was just driving straight past me around the outside, Vettel's able to do exactly the same thing. And we just lose a bucket load of time. We're unable to make a move going into Brook into the Brooklyn's corner there. But yeah, this is when it does start to turn a little bit because I start losing a lot. I start only matching these guys in front as opposed to actually closing the gap and overtaking them. I don't know whether that's down to my driving or it's down to the tire wear, but even despite me on being on the prime tire, I should really have a little bit more grip than what I normally do. Anyways, we're going into the chicane. We've, a couple of cars have gone into the pits for their scheduled pit stops on the medium tyre to switch to the prime tyre. Going into the final corner, we're now on to lap number six. We're going to make sure we get option tyres fitted just to avoid any possible glitches that happen with our pit stops. We're going to turn one. We've got Fernando Alonso in front of us as we come onto the old start finish straight. We're now going to put it into rich fuel mix to try and gain as much time as possible and try and make this overcut work due to the AI struggling on the f on their opening lap for their new, fre new fresh tyres. We're now kind of cut to the lap number seven. There's a couple of cars, the rest of the cars have actually gone into the pits now, and we are now leading the race with the two Mercedes behind in second and third respectively. The hometown hero Hamilton in s ahead of Rosberg in this case. Let's see what the gap is though as we into the second sector. This is what the split time is from the first sector. It's around 12.7 seconds. You're going to notice the gap does go up a bit when we go cut to the final sector and wait for the split from the middle sector from Hamilton. The gap has increased quite dramatically. We're now 14.8 seconds ahead of Hamilton. So now what I decided to do is to go for one more lap on these tyres, but I think it was a bit of a mistake on my behalf so I, because I do start to lose time. Anyway, we're back at Stowe Corner for lap number eight. We're actually going to come into the pits now. As you can see, Hamilton has reduced the gap to us, so I think he's now back up to full speed, and we're on the last length legs of these tyres. So we're now going to come into the pits for, to change to the option tyre, and hopefully get as close as we can to Hamilton. Possibly even challenge Rosberg for second. We'll see how much the overcut has paid off for us. So it's a very slow pit entry as well, which is not ideal. But as you can see, Hamilton's going to come and overtake us as he heads onto the start finish straight. That's the dot you can see on the mini map. That's him up into first. We're down to second. But I noticed there's someone else coming into the pits. I don't know who that is. We'll have to wait and find out if it's any of the front runners. But anyway, we're going to come out, come out of the pit stops. We've rejoined in second place, so the overcut has worked a treat. And it must be must have been the Mercedes of Rosberg as Ricardo's now up into third place. I very much doubt that Ricardo's managed to overtake Rosberg unless the Mercedes has had a problem, that's why he's had to come into the pits. I checked the replays after this race, but I just didn't see anything wrong with the Mercedes. I don't know what was going on there. We're now going to come onto the Wellington straight. That's Ricardo just behind us there. We're going to see what the gap is between us and Hamilton. It's around 12 seconds, or more like 13 seconds, considering it is 12.9 seconds to be precise. So anyway, we're going to cut to later on the lap. Towards the actually towards to the end of lap number nine, this is what the gap is now as we come on to start lap number ten, and the gap has come down to around eleven seconds, just over eleven seconds to be precise. You're going to notice that we're going to close the gap even more by the next two seconds as we come on to the hangar straight. It's the gap is now under under ten seconds. It's now nine point six. 
So we are having a fantastic race in an attempt to cut, catch with Hamilton. If we were able to continue this race, but we had a few more laps, I think we could definitely challenge for the race victory. But due to the fact that this circuit is one of the longest circuits on the calendar, means that we've got a shorter number of laps. We're going to come on to the final corner to start lap number 11. You'll notice we're going to set the fastest lap of the race. This is very good pace from us so far in this race, particularly on these option tyres. Who knows what, how well we could have done on these option tyres if we started the race. But then again, the overcut may not have worked. We are now on lap number 11, or halfway through lap number 11. You're going to notice what the split time is after the Maggots and Begots complex. We have lost the advantage that we initially had on these fresh tyres. I think we're getting a quite ragged, a bit on the ragged edge here. So with the gap is down to 8.4. So that's pretty much compounded our compound the fact that we are, are unable to get this race victory today. We come into the towards the end of the lap. We're just going to try and do our best as always. Just maintain that second place. We might start to turn the engine down a little bit just to um, save the engine and ensure we do come home in second place. And that is 18 points to the championship and another one pound 80 to the Henry Surtees Foundation. Anyways, we're now going to cut to lap the, towards the end of lap number 12. We're coming into the end, to the hangar straight once again. The gap is under seven seconds, so we're still closing the gap. I just don't, but it's just not enough now, considering there's only one lap remaining after this. Coming into Stowe Corner now, we're just going to just assume that we're going to get second place here. But hang on, we're going to cut to Sergio Perez, who is a a bit further down. This is his lap number 12. But look. He gets a front right puncture. That is not good. He may be a hazard to some of the faster cars, including the cars behind him currently who are battling for position. But anyways, look how slow he's going. He could easily interfere with the race hit, race results here. You never know, but he's moved out the way of a couple of cars. That's a Toro Rosso making his way past. He comes on to his final lap. But anyways, we're going to see how... Cl look, at, look at how wide he takes this corner. Look how slow he's going as well. Very nearly hits the wall there. And this is on board Max Chilton, who's a little bit further down the road. This is how slow Perez is going. So you look how close Chilton is to hitting the Sauber, try who is trying to take evasive action from the Slow Force India. And this is now on board Marcus Ericsson, who is the last runner of the field. Look how slow he's being held up. He's being behind his teammate, who is stuck behind Perez. And that means Perez is now at the back of the field, which means the next car that could overtake him is Lewis Hamilton. Speaking of Lewis Hamilton, we're going to cut to him now. This is him on his final lap onto the Wellington straight for the very last time. Looks like he's going to get take a home Grand Prix victory and more points ahead of his teammate Nico Rosberg. But look at this. This is Perez in front. Look how look how much he's getting held up. He can't get past. I don't understand why he just got, isn't going around the outside. So we could take advantage of this. We're now back on board with us. There's a yellow flag in front of us. That, that those two cars in front, that's Hamilton and Perez. We could take we could steal the race win here. We give Hamilton a little bit of a shove because he's not getting out of the way. We've taken the race victory, I think. Hamilton's still stuck behind. The, the Force India, but now there's the green flag. We're now back on board with Hamilton. This is what he saw when we overtook him. Look at that, look at how much Perez is holding him up. That is inexcusable from the AI in my opinion. But we're gonna take it anyways. This is fantastic for us. We're gonna take a surprising race victory here but we've got to make sure we don't make any mistakes and allow Hamilton to repass us as we come into Cops Corner for the final time. We're now heading into the Maggots and Beckett's complex for the very last time on this in, in this season. We're coming out of it now, we're still in the lead, we're in trying to ensure we make sure we don't make any mistakes in the final three corners or so. Let's see what the gap is between us and Hamilton. The gap is over 4 seconds, so Hamilton lost around 10 to 15 seconds behind that Force India. I think Perez, that's the second time that Perez has screwed a Mercedes out of a result after what happened in Australia, if you remember, if you recall, so far back, right at the start of the season. But anyways, we're coming through the final two corners here. We're going to take a, our second victory of the season, a surprising win, but I will definitely take it. That's £2.50 to the Henry Surtees Foundation.
top drive from Nico Rosberg today. The German finished on the top step of the podium with a comprehensive performance. I have absolutely zero clue what race you were watching there, David Croft, because Rosberg finished all the way down in 8th place, not in 1st. Confirmation results, ourselves to getting the surprise victory in 1st, Hamilton 2nd, Ricardo getting his first podium in 3rd, Bottas in 4th for Williams, Alonso 5th for Ferrari, Vettel in 6th, Reichen in 7th, Rosberg in 8th, Massa 9th, and Jensen Button taking the 10th spot. There's a couple of penalties at the back there, with Max Chilton all the way up in 15th place, that's a fantastic result for the us and for the Marussia team and for him personally. We're now going to cut to the Drivers' Championship. Hamilton still leads the championship but we have gained a little bit on him but to be honest I don't think we're a legitimate title contender like how Daniel Ricciardo was a quote championship contender in 2014 in real life. I just don't think that's realistic. Anyways, Ricardo moves up ahead of his teammate because of his first podium season. Alonso also moves up thanks to one of his best results of the season in fifth place today. We are now going to cut to the Constructors' Championship. Where Marussia are still in third place ahead of Williams and only behind the dominant Mercedes. Who had a bit of a blip race today. And Red Bull Racing who got a podium today which is a very good result for them. Hope you guys enjoyed the British Grand Prix. I certainly did enjoy playing it. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you for the next video where we head to the Hockenheim Ring in Germany.